what we're going to do with this molecule is find the two major products that we get when we monobrominate this molecule. Now to do this, we're going to see if there's any resonance stabilized carbon because we see a double bond here. Well, the two carbons that are resonance stabilized is this one and this one. Now this one's a secondary while this one's a tertiary and they're both allylic, but tertiary is more stable. So we're just going to ignore this secondary and look at this one. Now, when we do monobrominate this, we're going to form a free radical. So what we end up getting is this. We have this molecule right here. We have our double bond there and we have a free radical there. Now this free radical, it could form a bond with a bromine and there you go. You get a bromine bond right there. Now, however, something interesting could also happen. What we could do is have one of these uh, electrons in this double bond go and form a double bond with this free radical right there. So we end up getting is this molecule. So let me draw it better. We have a cyclopentane, the methyl there, and the double bond is forming there. And then our radical is actually right here. So how many different spots could we form bromine? Well, we can form bromine right here and we can form bromine right here. So the two different products that we can actually get is a cyclopentane with a bromine over here and a cyclopentane methyl and a bromine over here. And let's not forget where the double bonds are at. So the double bonds are right there and right there. So because this is allylic, it's resonance stabilized, so you can actually form two different spots where you can get carbocations. Now, which of these is more stable? Well, since this is a tertiary carbon right here, it's more stable than a secondary that's over there. So this is actually more major than this one. They're both major products, but this is more uh, shown within the products.